Hey guys, sorry for any background noise. Um, my neighbors are throwing a party. I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. They sound like they're creating some secret ritual. Anyways, back to the story. You had your eye on Kikichi. He was a demon. You thought he would be a perfect person to make a deal with. After all, he has nothing else to lose, you thought. So, he decided to visit him. And that way, he was awake. Watching his phone, he appeared. Ah, who the heck are you? He said. As he literally dropped his phone. I'm a listener. Nice to meet you. He said in a complex voice. Why are you doing my room? He muttered out. Well, I'm here to make a deal. He looked up and down at you. Why would I make a deal with a demon? Hmm. I gotta admire your observation. He said. Well, think about it. I can protect you. In exchange for your soul, of course. Protect me from what? He said. Oh, you... You acting like I haven't been having my eyes on you as a target. Think about it. Abuse of parents, bullying, the whole shenanigans. I can protect you from it all. Even outside of it. There are two conditions though. One, you cannot join out the deal. One, you finally die. Two, I will not hurt any person you command me to. I can only hurt the ones that hurt you. I'm not... That evil, he said, rolling your eyes. You have a deal? He said, I'll stretch in your hand with a blue fire rising out of it. I, I need time to think about it. You know, with the whole selling my soul for the demon thing, he said, clearly nervous. <sighs> All right, then. I understand. Here, hand it, you hand him a piece of paper. Huh? What's that? It's a ritual to summon me. Just in case you changed your mind. Anyways, I should get going. He disappeared. He kept on thinking about your offer. It would be good, good but it could be bad at the same time, he thought. I mean, he would be giving away his soul. But he would have protection from anyone. He sat in his bed thinking, I'll just say tomorrow, he thought. He pulled the blankets and went to sleep. The next day, he decided to make his decision, and he accepted. He contacted you by the ritual. As he was done, the, the pentagram started going bright purple. He looked up. Agreed to my terms, he said. Yes. <laughs> Great. I knew you weren't stupid. He said, I was stretching your hand, but the now blue fire turning purple. He shook your hand. Ah, oh, my hand, he said. Sorry, it's a requirement. It's going to sting a little, but it's fine. May I ask, have you ever watched Black Butler? I uh, kind of, he said. You know that mark that Sebastian has hand? Well, my mark is on the other side of my hand. Look. He turned around his palm to see your mark. It's kind of pretty, he said. Uh-huh, thank you. I had specially designed for these cases. Like, if I'm going to be your demon protector for all eternity... I can may as well make it look good, he said, rolling your eyes. Making him chuckle a little. Anyways, I should head out. I have to follow you to school, remember? 
Are you going to follow me everywhere? Ew, of course not. I'm your protector, not your stalker. Perverted stalker. Like, I'm not going to follow you into the bathroom or just stand over your bed while you sleep. Jeez. You're super sassy, aren't you? Yes, yes I am, he said. All right, I'll be out in a minute. He walked to his room and finished getting ready. Great, let's get out of here. He and him walked out and onto the street. People were staring at him. Now in the sunlight, he realized he had so many cuts and bruises. He knew he had marks before, but he never knew he had this many. This is what attracted you to him. He might have a demon, but he still felt bad for him. Like, you know you're supposed to take a soul when he dies and all that bull crap. But you generally felt bad for him. And without the whole, even without the whole, I'm going to eat your soul when you die thing, you generally liked him. When I got to school, some bullies started picking on him. He looked at you, and he, you just quietly said, they're not going to see me in plus. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this part of the deal. If they're verbally picking on you, I won't do anything, but if they start physically hurting you, then I'll do something, okay? Kokichi went silent. Huh? What are you staring at, you freak, when the bully said? He kicked him in the gut. All right, that was your time to act. You pushed on the bully, and you stomped on his chest, causing him to coughing up and wheezing. He started coughing and wheezing, and all the other looks horrified, like... He looked like he was having a seizure. Let's get out of here, the other bully said. Yeah! The other two left the big one behind. Hey, hey come back here, he muttered out. Come help me. Nah, bro, we're good, the other ones yelled out as they ran away. You decided that was the end of your fun. He finally stopped, and you let go of him. What the f- What did you do, you freak? I, I didn't do anything. I'm right over here. Smart mouth, he said as he walked off. You know, he didn't have to go that, to that extent. Like I said, it was a part of my deal to protect you. And I can do whatever I want as long as I'm not physically hurting them without no reason to, he said. Well, I mean, when you put it like that, you're not technically hurting them for no reason. Exactly. I knew you were smart, he said with a chuckle. Now, come on. <laughs> Part of my idea was not getting you on class to class on time, he said. Oh, right. He started running. Thanks. He flashed you a big smile that made your heart melt. Oh my god. You felt like he was evaporating. You quickly shook out of your trance and followed him to class. This cycle continued on. And sometimes, if you felt like it, you would help him. You actually developed feelings for him. He was a genuinely nice guy. I don't know why people would pick on him. Sometimes you guys would do random stuff that was not part of your deal. You guys became really good friends. You would sometimes braid his hair, even against his will, because you're going to braid that hair, whether he likes it or not. That was, that was your most famous line that you said most of the time so you guys hanged out together. You, 
You would sometimes defend him from his parents. And <laughs> quickly, people realized Kokichi was not a person to mess, mess with. Because anytime someone would bully him, something bad would happen to them. And no one can prove that Kokichi did it. Like, during the fought, fight with one bully, kicking a ball at Kokichi's face, breaking his nose. But the next time the kids show up, he had a broken leg. And Kokichi was nowhere around. And they couldn't use... And they used the security cameras to prove that Kokichi broke his leg, but no one could prove it. So, Kokichi asserted dominance really fast. Of course, he wouldn't let that get to his head. Then, his mother and father started seeing things that was weird to them. They would see him talking to himself. Well, he was actually talking to you, but he was invisible at the time, so they didn't know it was you. He would be talking about random stuff, grabbing extra plates of food. At first, that died of him being greedy, but one time they decided to watch him. And he didn't touch the food at all, and it disappeared. They were starting to get worried. Well, not for Kokichi, but for Dumb. All could they know, there could be a demon in their house, they thought. They tried not to jump to conclusions and send Kokichi to a mental hospital. Not like they wanted him anyways. They just cared for him. Well, because they wanted to look good. In the mental hospital, you still technically visit him. He was doing a lot better there at, than his parents' house. Of course, there's occasionally a couple of bullies, but you took it easy on them. Because most of them were kids. Like younger kids than younger than Kokichi, so he took a little, little easier than on them. One day, he was able to help Kokichi sneak out the window and onto the rooftop of the asylum. You guys then sat on the rooftop. <sighs> you guys looking for the nice guy? Oh, you see that one right there? He said, pointing at the star. Yeah. We call that one a hell star. Why? <laughs> no one knows. Someone says it has something to do with Lucifer. I don't remember the exact story. Well, can you tell me all about demon for folklore and all that? Hmm. You really interested in demon kids? Yeah, I'm interested in demon kids. Tell me. He chuckled. Well, demon kids. People might think it's dem there are demons that are kids, but it's way deeper than that. You and him would talk about demon for folklore, and sometimes we would read books about it, and you would sometimes confirm if they were true or not. Eventually, Kokichi started returning his feelings. One day, when he was guys doing a regular routine of sneaking up onto the asylum rooftop and watching the stars. Hey, listen, can you stand up, please? Um, alright. He stood up. Kokichi stood up with you and squeezed your hand super tight. Kokichi, what are you doing? Um, there's something I need to tell you, he said, curly nervous. Huh? What's that? I know, this is weird. And you're a human. Well, I'm human, you're a demon. And I'm not sure if this is going to ruin what we have a friendship, or if you call it a friendship, or a partnership, I don't care. I genuinely really like you. I'm not joking, he said. Before you can ask him if it was a joke. He was expecting you to laugh at him or even be angry at him. But he just chuckled and gave me the biggest hug in the world. I love you too, he said, pointing to a hug. You guys spent all your time together. Eventually, Kokichi died. But you guys spent a lot of time in hell together. You guys lived a good life. People might say hell is a bad place where people go to be tortured. But... You guys have fun there. You visit the shops and all of that. You guys had a really good, everlasting relationship. Hey guys, this story's kind of short, but I hope you enjoy. I gotta run. 
See you next time. Bye, guys.